Well, what is Mr. Chidamram's visit really going to achieve? Has he applied a, the balm in a sense to American investors who would perhaps feel apprehensive about investing in India, particularly with the political uncertainty that we are seeing now? Well, joining us to discuss this, uh, I've got with me in the studio Dr. Arvind Virmani, former Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India. Thanks very much, sir, for being with us. N.K. Singh, former Finance Secretary, also with us, and Sajid Chennai. Uh, Chief Economist at J.P. Morgan, looking into the India story. Thank you all very much for joining us. Dr. Virmani, uh, first, bad news since that report of ours uh, was actually aired, was actually edited. The Q1 numbers in terms of GDP growth seem to be bad. Now, according to the Index of Industrial Production, it's fallen by 1.6% in May compared to a year ago. This sharp slowdown from April's 1.9% growth doesn't bode well for GDP growth. If this is the environment, this is the milieu, we've got a finance minister in the United States trying to sell a dream, but this dream might just be a nightmare. Well, there are two things. One is the performance. So let me just start with that. The other is some of the other things. Uh, on the performance, yeah, in November, December, I think in your studios uh, here somewhere, uh, I had predicted, uh, I had made a forecast of 6% uh, for this current year, and I had been saying, uh, putting a kind of uh, a variation of 0.25 percent uh, around that. Uh, I think with these new numbers, it's likely to be on the lower side, if not even uh, lower than my uh, forecast what, what, of last what, year. What is your forecast at this uh, stage? I would say uh, around 6.75 is now the more likely uh, band. So let's say 5.5 to 6 percent. 5.5 to 6 percent, yeah. despite the fact that we've had a very good rainfall this year. Well, and the agricultural sector is likely to pick up. Yes, but the manufacturing and other numbers are probably much worse, worse than, than what one expected. Now, of course, that doesn't mean they cannot pick up for the rest of the year, and we will see. But what I'm at this point saying is basically that the range, which, uh, as I said, was yes. between 6.75 to 6.25. Yes. We are more likely to be on the lower end of this range. Sajid Chinoy, is that a view that you share that given these, uh, the, the forecasts of the GDP numbers based on what are coming in now? Two questions. Firstly, what exactly is the dream that Mr. Chidambaram is still selling? And secondly, do you agree with these numbers that, uh, that Dr. Virmani is sharing with us that in fact it, would be, it could well be considerably less than 6%? Oh, absolutely. I think we'd be lucky if we get 5.5% growth this year. I mean, clearly there are a couple of positives. Uh, we have a very strong monsoon that should help rural demand starting September, October. That bodes well for some kinds of consumption. Also, the fiscal drag this year will be less than last year. Remember, we had a very sharp fiscal correction last year. Uh, what we need to do this year is proportionately less and that should help. But that does, should not take away from the fundamental problems, which is today's IP number simply reflects a larger malaise. We've had a very sharp downturn in manufacturing, no pickup at all in the capital goods sector or private investment, very sluggish export growth again in today's data. And I think worst of all, you know, when you have a 12-13% depreciation of your currency, that can actually be stagflationary. So on the one hand, it will put push inflation pressures up, like we saw today, CPI inflation is back up at 10%. And at the same time, that sharp depreciation by pressurizing corporate balance sheets, which have a lot of unhedged foreign exchange liabilities, can further imperil a pickup in investment. So on all accounts, the, the currency depreciation is very, al very al unwelcome news and significantly complicates near-term macro management. I'll make one more point, however. I think these are all worries we know about. The more immediate concern and the reason I believe the finance minister you know, has gone abroad is we face a pretty gaping hole in our balance of payments this year. You know, we have a current account deficit expected to be around $80 billion. And every year we, you know, we finance 20 or 30 billion of that from portfolio flows, which are very volatile. Well, guess what? A lot of portfolio money is left this year, and it's very unlikely we get anything of that magnitude uh, for the rest of the year, given what's happening globally, given what's happened to U.S. Treasury yields. So where is that last $20 billion going to come from to make the balance of payments sure. balance? Without that, rupee could come under even more pressure. And I think that's why policymakers are right in trying to find other sources of capital. N.K. Singh, why would, um, I, I'd like you to perhaps respond also to what Sajid Chinoy had to say, but why would a finance minister need to go unprecedented four-day visit, an air dash in a sense, to the United States to convince American investors? American investors have been here for a very long time. Doesn't this include an element of panic 
in the mind of the finance minister or the finance ministry? No, let me say this, that uh, uh, unfortunately it's a fact of life that when the bad news comes, the bad news doesn't come singly, it comes in a bunch. Uh, lower growth rate trajectory. Uh, I, I agree with Arvind that I would still place the growth rate not at 5.5, which my preceding panelists said, but I would place it closer to around 5.7. But that's, of course, bad enough because it's much lower than the budget numbers. And this has serious consequences in terms of revenue buoyancy. It has uh, serious consequences in terms of the necessary uh, expenditure compression which is needed to achieve the somewhat daunting uh, fiscal deficit target.